In this Warmaster video we shall take a look at the Skaven Army. The Skaven Army list was released as a supplementary faction after the initial rulebook was printed. The menace below. An evil force unlike any other is watching and waiting. They are impatient, yet they bide their time. They are scheming. Their nefarious plots stretch unseen across all lands. They are everywhere, yet they remain hidden. From the world's edge mountains to the jungles of the Southlands, from the arid dunes to the barbaric Northlands, no kingdom remains untouched. They are a heinous race that long over the centuries has brought low ancient dwarf holds, grinding down that proud race to but a fraction of its former glory. In the past, they have contaminated the temple cities of the cold-blooded creatures of Lustria and reduced the empire, the greatest human nation of the old world, to total starvation and near ruin. They are planning for worse to come. Across the surface of the world, alliances are severed, plagues are spread and wars are started, all orchestrated by the shrouded and implacable menace that lurks undetected under the very feet of those they conspire to destroy. They are the Skaven, and they seek nothing short of complete mastery of the world. The vile Skaven gnaw the roots of the world like a malignant cancer. They spread corruption, mercilessly undermining civilization, waiting until the time is ripe to invade. Countless armies prepare to burst forth from their underground realm to claim their rightful heritage of the Skaven. To rule supreme is their ultimate destiny. Promised to them a hundredfold in the furative whispers of the great horned rat, the malevolent god of the ratman that is forever scratching at the fabric separating the material world from the great beyond. When the Skaven abandon their secretive ways and emerge from their subterranean lairs, they do so for only one reason, to unleash vicious and inhuman war. It is a nightmare vision, a ravenous horde, a chaotic and rolling tide of verminous ratmen in unimaginably vast numbers. Ranks of clan rat warriors surge forward, bristling with blades and spears. Strange doom-laden symbols and runes carved on, scrawled on their shields and banners. The storm vermin, hardened elites, stand out, their well-armoured and militaristic ways contrasting with the ragged masses of the Skaven slaves that are driven callously to the front. Among the tattered ranks of Skaven soldiers can be found troops of more of foul packs of mutated beasts bred for war, fanatical disease-ridden plague monks, and arcane and terrible engines of destruction that blend science and sorcery in a diabolical and hitherto unseen fashion. A Skaven army moves at a speed that belies its staggering and unwielding size, seemingly pouring over the landscape in flowing waves of chittering ratmen. After a battle, a Skaven army will disappear like floodwaters, draining back into countless unseen holes, leaving only scoured lands and covered in cracked and well-picked over bones. Who knows where the Skaven will surface next? The only certainty is that they wait in the dark beneath the world, ever watching with beady red eyes for the right moment to strike. The Skaven are a race of bipedal ratmen that are so rarely seen that many deny their very existence. The majority of the man-sized vermin are slight of build and if they abandon their slinking hunch gait stand between four to five feet in height. With the largest specimens reaching over six feet, Skaven are covered in close fur save for their ears, muzzle, hands and fleshy worm-like tails. The eyes of the ratmen gleam red in torchlight and their mouths are lined with wicked teeth, particularly their yellowed incisors which are razor sharp for ripping and tearing. Skaven move in rapid stop-start scurries. They exclude nervous energy in twitchy, hurried bursts and always seem to be in an agitated state. Skaven metabolism burns at a ferocious rate, peaking with a spike of adrenaline if they feel angry or threatened. This hypervitality gives rise to the quick reflexes, endless haste and the legendary speed of the Skaven. The drawback to such ferocity is that the ratmen need to gorge themselves after a long march or battle to refill their drained bodies. Amongst Skaven, this phenomenon is known as the Black Hunger and goes away to explaining their prosperity for feasting upon the fallen of either side after combat. Larger individuals have been known to devour an entire Skaven after a battle. A Skaven suffering the pangs of the Black Hunger and unable to replenish himself will visibly weaken and soon after die. 
This is why personal challenges so often end with the loser eat being eaten by the victor. Although not regularly seen by surface dwellers, the Skaven are arguably the most numerous of all the races. With a population of titanic proportions, the Skaven remain hidden away underneath unsuspecting nations. The Skaven army list features 10 troop choices and 3 character choices. You must take one Grey Seer as the general, and for every 1000 points you take, you must include 2 units of clan rats and 2 units of rat swarms. There are 7 types of infantry ranging from chaff to heavy, 1 type of artillery and 2 types of machine. The cheap cost of your troops allows you to build a very large Skaven horde. Skaven armies in Warmaster also feature 3 unique special rules. The first, Strength in Numbers, allows you to build brigades of any size, permitting you to build a very large army without having to spend a great deal on characters. The second, Vermintide, allows all of your troops to pursue any type of enemy, and this compensates for the lack of cavalry in the army. The final rule, Under the Lash, restricts the command range of all characters to 20 centimeters, and this underlines the theme of the army that it should be kept together as one large mass of troops. Clan Rats are your first compulsory infantry type. They have the standard light infantry profile found in many armies in Warmaster, but are 5 points cheaper than equivalent troops from other armies. This discount encourages you to take large numbers of clan rats, which fits the Skaven theme of an army composed of hordes of low quality troops. Clan rats are useful as support for your more expensive troop types, or they can be sent in waves against the enemy heavy hitters to sacrifice them instead of more valuable troops. Storm Vermin are your medium infantry option and you are limited to 2 units per 1000 points. They have the standard medium infantry profile but also have a 5 point discount when compared to similar troops from other armies. Their decent armour save of 5 plus allows them to take a charge from enemy cavalry without folding immediately. This combined with their ability to pursue any troop type makes them an excellent frontline unit choice. Jezails are your ranged infantry unit choice. They have a clan rat profile with the addition of a 30cm armour piercing shooting attack. And they also get the 5 point Skaven discount. You are limited to 2 units per 1000 points so it's not a good idea to try and make a shooting army list with the Skaven. The Jezail stat line can also be used to represent the more exotic weapon teams from the Skaven army, such as warp fire throwers, rattling guns and poisoned wind mortars. Jezails can be placed amongst your melee infantry to help defend against enemy cavalry attacks or break up enemy brigades with their shooting. They also function well as a backline sweeper unit to protect against enemy flyers and also make excellent artillery guards. Plague Monks are your fanatic unit. They have the standard fanatic profile common to many armies in Warmaster and don't get the Skaven infantry discount. They can reliably be used to assault the enemy infantry and cause massive damage before they're killed off. Alternatively they can be held on the flanks of your brigades in column formation to help defend against enemy cavalry, which they can then pursue. Plague Monks are a good hammer unit for the army and work well against enemy in defended terrain. Rat Swarms are your chaff infantry units and the stat line can equally represent Skaven slaves. You must take 2 units for every 1000 points in your army. They cannot be driven back by enemy shooting and cannot be supported by other infantry. This gives you the option of using them as a front line skirmish screen. As by placing them in front of more valuable troops you protect the valuable troops from enemy missile fire. And in addition to this, if the rat swarms are charged by the enemy, as they cannot be supported by other troops, your supporting units will not be included in the combat. So when the rat swarms get defeated and pushed back, any units behind them can simply refuse to make way, as they're not part of the combat. The rat swarms will therefore be destroyed, but then the enemy has to waste an advance move into your more valuable infantry and without the enemy charge bonus, your troops are far more likely to win the combat. 
An alternative use for rat swarms is as very cheap support for your heavy hitters. As although rat swarms themselves cannot be supported, there is nothing to stop them supporting your other infantry. One final use for rat swarms is to send them straight at the enemy as suicidal troops, hoping that you will cast death frenzy upon them in combat. Gutter runners are your infiltration unit. They have a clan rat profile with the addition of a 360 degree 15 cm shooting attack. Gutter runners have the unique option of being deployed via infiltration, which means you can hold them in reserve until you wish to spring an ambush on the enemy out of dense terrain. Ambushing gutter runners are best used to attack weak enemy troops such as artillery or missile infantry. But be wary of launching your ambushes against troops who are themselves in dense terrain as they will count as defended whilst you will not. As the gutter runners can only ambush the enemy one unit at a time it can be quite hard to coordinate your surprise attacks. However the psychological impact of having troops that can spring out of nowhere to attack your enemy is a good reason to include gutter runners. Finally gutter runners make excellent scouts. Rat Ogres are your heavy infantry choice. They have the standard heavy infantry profile common to many armies in Warmaster. You are limited to two units per thousand points and they don't get the Skaven infantry discount. Rat Ogres are an excellent addition to the army list as they provide you with much needed resilience and combat punch. This combined with their ability to pursue any type of enemy means they are equally at home either as a strong centre point for the army or on the flanks where they can chase away enemy cavalry. Always try to provide them with some cheap supporting units wherever possible. The warp lightning cannon is your artillery choice and the stat line could equally represent other types of artillery such as plague catapults or doom rockets. It only has a 40 cm range and does not ignore enemy armour but it does have up to six attacks per cannon. This makes it of more use as a defensive artillery piece to protect against enemy charges on your main line, especially if your hits cause confusion on the enemy as they charge home. Unfortunately warp lightning cannons do have a tendency to self-destruct and this can happen at least once per game. This means they're rarely picked for competitive play. The doom wheel is your armoured machine and is an excellent shock unit the combination of terror and 5 plus d6 attacks on the charge make it an excellent line breaker. Doom wheels are very good when used to attack enemy cavalry units but also have enough punch to break through enemy heavy infantry brigades. You are limited to one doom wheel per thousand points but I recommend taking at least one in every army. Just make sure to protect them from enemy cannon. The Screaming Bell is an interesting machine choice. It functions as an independent unit rather than an upgrade for a character and it can't move on its own unless it is brigaded with another infantry unit. It provides a number of passive buffs to the army. Firstly any unit in base contact with the Screaming Bell becomes immune to terror and this is useful if you hide the Screaming Bell in the middle of a brigade of your heaviest infantry before sending them against the enemy's terror causers. However the far more useful aspect of the Screaming Bell is that any Skaven hero or warlock within 30 centimetres gets a plus one bonus to their command value. So getting access to command nine heroes is well worth the investment. The downside is that the Screaming Bell is actually very fragile and if pushed back in combat it will be destroyed. This makes it a tactical choice as you must invest points in infantry to protect it. The Grey Seer is your Command 9 general choice and is also a wizard. The Grey Seer only adds one attack in combat and has a command range of only 20 centimetres. But he is very cheap at only 130 points. Unless you've picked a Screaming Bell for the army, your general with his command of 9 should be held back to issue the most important commands for the turn. And the fact that he's a spellcaster means he should be kept relatively close to where the fighting is. The Skaven hero has a standard hero profile common to all armies in Warmaster but he is 10 points cheaper than equivalent heroes in other armies due to the fact that his command range is only 20 centimetres. It's worth investing in quite a few heroes to keep the army moving as your brigades will get split up as the battle unfolds. 
the addition of a screaming bell in the army turns your heroes into command nine characters the best you'll get in the game sadly skaven characters have no sources of terror and no mount upgrades so they're of limited use in combat the Warlock is your wizard character. They're very cheap at only 30 points but have a terrible command value of only 6. If you have a Screaming Bell they can be used to issue commands but otherwise their primary function is to cast spells and you can usually afford 2 in a 2000 point army. The Skaven spell list has some interesting options. Skitterleap is a teleport spell and is best used to get your Grey Seer out of trouble if he gets caught in combat. Warp Lightning is a standard 30cm 5 plus to cast spell that inflicts up to 3 hits on the enemy with no armour saves allowed. It's good for assassination attempts on enemy artillery pieces or adding a couple of hits to an already wounded unit. Death Frenzy is in my opinion the best spell in the Skaven list and possibly why you would consider taking a Ring of Magic. It has the potential to turn even the lowliest Skaven unit into an absolute lawnmower capable of ripping through the heaviest enemy infantry or cavalry. It also comes with the chance to destroy your own units but the potential threat it poses is often enough to force the enemy to dispel it at all costs. Finally Plague is a very good damage dealing spell but is very hard to cast. A good use for Plague is to target enemy artillery or enemy missile troops who don't have an armour save. And again, Plague is a good reason why you might bring a Ring of Magic. If you've always wanted to build an army with the highest breakpoint in Warmaster, Skaven is the army for you. Just don't expect to win many battles with an army composed entirely of rat swarms. You could opt for a shooting themed list, but this doesn't really play to the Skaven's strengths. A better option might be a melee focused infantry build by maxing out on the more elite units in the army. Alternatively you can just take two of everything and then throw in enough clan rats to build your breakpoint high. This gives you the most tactical variety but it can be quite hard to put the right troops in the right place at the right time. So why choose to play Skaven? Well Skaven are a horde army and the vast majority of their troops are low quality expendable infantry. Skaven are individually weak but in large numbers they are very dangerous. So their playstyle revolves around outnumbering, outflanking and swarming the enemy. The Skaven battle plan revolves around throwing waves of your own troops against the enemy hoping to drag down their elites. Meanwhile your own heavy hitters can be sent to target the enemy's weak underbelly and bring them close to their breakpoint. As a Skaven player you should never try and fight the enemy on their own terms. Don't attack their best troops with your best troops. Instead lure the enemy heavy hitters to attack your weaker troops and once the enemy fall back from combat you can spring a counter trap with initiative. Skaven models are freely available from alternative manufacturers. But as your army is likely to be very large in terms of numbers, it can be quite expensive to build a large force and you have to invest a lot of hours to get them painted. Skaven armies have a long history of warfare against the Dwarfs, the Lizardmen, the Empire and the Undead. So if your opponents field these armies, Skaven make good antagonists. The low cost of so many Skaven units means you will always have a high breakpoint in your army. This makes the army quite forgiving as you can lose entire brigades of troops without getting anywhere near your breakpoint. You will usually outnumber your opponent and this is a good psychological advantage. It also makes it easier to get flank attacks which you should always aim for. The Ratogas are excellent heavy infantry. They have the standard profile of ogre type units but they have the ability to pursue all enemy types and also access to extremely cheap support. The Doomwheel is the source of terror in your army and a very hard hitting machine whilst the Screaming Bell gives you access to command 9 heroes which goes a long way to mitigate against their short command range. You should try and use your Skaven army like an unstoppable wave that moves forward, absorbs the enemy charges then swallows up the enemy troops. 
Wherever possible, keep your troops within initiative range of each other. The key weakness of the Skaven army is its low command range, which means you have to keep your brigades relatively tightly packed. And this leaves the army open to attacks from enemy artillery and also from being outflanked by cavalry or chariots. The Skaven artillery is quite weak and offers up easy breakpoints if taken out by the enemy. The army also features very few units with high armour or a high amount of hits. And this can mean that a powerful enemy unit can chew through up to four Skaven units in one combat turn. Another key weakness of the army is its lack of any cavalry or chariots, which means you are always going to be within 20 centimetres of the enemy when you want to charge them. The minus one command penalty this imposes makes it quite hard to set up assaults with the Skaven army. Instead you are more likely to be reacting to enemy attacks using your initiative. What tactics should you employ to defeat the Skaven? Any army that has access to long range artillery such as cannon will cause the Skaven a lot of problems as they have no way of closing the distance across the board very quickly. Also, brigades of heavy infantry such as dwarfs, ogres or chaos will defeat the Skaven infantry quite handily. And units of knights or monsters will be able to smash straight through the Skaven lines. The key tactic however is to not let your own troops get overwhelmed by the Skaven. Use your superior command ranges to send troops up the flanks of the battlefield, forcing the Skaven army to split its formation. Skaven units isolated away from the main battle line are easy pickings, especially if you can hit them in the flank. Overall I would describe Skaven as a fun army to play. Their lack of mobility can be frustrating and it may take you many games before you achieve a victory with them. However, once you have made the army work for you, victory tastes all the sweeter. And you may take some perverse satisfaction in knowing that you've brought down the pinnacle of the enemy's elite units with your horde of lowly rats. What about the RUSs? Rodents of unusual size? I don't think they exist. Ah! Oh! Oh, my God.